starting in 2024, films will be required to meet new inclusion standards um, to be eligible for the Academy Awards for Best Picture. They'll have to have a certain percentage of actors or crew from underrepresented racial and ethnic groups. What do you think of these new inclusion standards for films? They make me vomit. Why? Because this is an art form. It's also a, a form of commerce and it makes money, but it's an art. And no one should be telling me as an artist that I have to give in to the latest, most current idea of what morality is. And what are we risking? Are we really risking hurting people's feelings? You can't legislate that. And you have to let life be life. And I'm sorry, I don't think that there's a minority or a majority in the country that has to be catered to like that. Yeah. You know, Laurence Olivier mm. was the last white mm -hmm. actor to play Othello. And he did it in 1965. And he did it in blackface. And he played a black man brilliantly. Am I being told that I will never have a chance to play a black man? Is someone else being told that if they're not Jewish, they shouldn't play the Merchant of Venice? Mm -hmm. Are we crazy? Do we not know that art is art? This is so patronizing. It's so, it's so thoughtless and, and, and treating people like children. Do you think there's a difference between the question of representation and who is allowed to represent other groups? For example, as you said, somebody representing the Merchant of Venice. And the case of blackface explicitly in this country, given the history of slavery and the sensitivities around black racism. Do you think there's a, a difference between those? There shouldn't be. Why? Because it's patronizing. Because it says that we're so fragile that we don't, can't have our, our feelings hurt. We have to anticipate having our, our feelings hurt, our children's feelings. We don't know how to stand up and and bop the bully in the face. Do you think as, as we tell stories about our past, that there is a fuller version of our history that is perhaps more inclusive to the diversity yeah. of the country now or? You know, I once worked for a guy uh, who was making a film about the gangsters of the 30s. And I said, why did you change this incident and that incident from the reality? Because the reality was so much more interesting than what you created. And you, by changing it, you made it simple and smaller. And I totally believe that you can make a great film or a great painting or a great opera out of the truth yeah. first and, and, tr and, and try that first. And then if you can't do it, then make up some nonsense. But don't, don't tell me you can't do that, that history isn't that interesting. Final question. In 2020, you said, quote, I don't go to a lot of movies anymore because I don't like them. They're not very good anymore. And I probably have missed out on a bunch of really good films, but they're mostly crap. Why do you think modern films are mostly crap? Because we're going through this uh, uh, strange need to not create, but to create sequels. Sequels are 
death <laughs> sequels are like. Or there was a sequel to Jaws. But there wasn't. No sequel. No, not, never. <laughs> never came close to the brilliance of the first Jaws. And I'm very proud of that. Yeah, and well, very happy about it. I thank it. you for my phobia of sharks for my entire life. Me too. <laughs> I admit it. I won't go in. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm the same way. But I tell you, it's one, it's one thing to be around a generation of people who went for it, who risked it, who said, let's, let's go for it. And they did. And they made great films.